right, I want to start giving all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rikakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and also the teachers that I learned from that are part of Great Millstone. And salutations to the elect out there, wherever you may be. <laughs> I want to do a quick lesson about what the UFOs are that people, you know, talk about, that a lot of people say they see in the skies, sometimes during the day, sometimes during night. But what they're really seeing is the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. All right, I want to start with this scripture right here in Psalms 68, 17. The chariots of, the, of God, or Yahweh, are 20,000, even thousands of angels, and the Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. <clears throat> you see that? So the Most High, whose name is Yahweh, controls a lot of chariots. You see, they're not called UFOs. The real name of them are the chariots of the Lord. And also, they're called clouds, too. Let's go get a, a scripture. Psalm 68, 34. Ascribe ye strength unto Yahweh. His excellency is over Israel. His strength is in the clouds. You see that? How is his strength in the clouds? Let's go get a precept. Let's see. I think it's in Psalms. Let's get a precept. Psalms, I think, one, 104. Go get a precept. Make it. Clouds and chariots. All right. All right. Psalms 104, verse 3. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariots, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. You see that? The most high maketh the clouds his chariot. Chariot. Which means his strength. The strength, like the previous verse said, his strength is in the clouds. That's why you have those chairs that can do stuff that science, scientists can't explain. Like, you know, use great amounts of G-force when moving. They can go up and down quickly. Pretty sure they can probably move at light speed also. Like one guy said, when he said he said that they did research and that they traveled, I think thirteen miles, thirteen thousand miles per hour. You see, that's pretty fast. Right. Who laid the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariots? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? And yeah, these chariots they don't have to have propellers. They can they can change direction instantly. A lot of them can shape shift. They can go to the depths. That's why some stories talk about chariots going like underwater, like being sought, being su being seen by uh, submarines and going like to the deepest part. Then coming right up and, and traveling like at light speed, it's right into the atmosphere. All right, let's get another scripture. Isaiah 31 and 5, this is a precept. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. You see that? The Most High is going to defend His chosen people as birds flying. How is He going to do that? By using His chariots. Defending, also He will deliver them. And passing over, He will preserve them. You see? The God of Israel. So by, as birds flying, He's going to defend Jerusalem. How do birds fly? Whew. They fly sometimes in formation, and they fly. You know, when you when you're close when you're close to a bird, he pro he flies pretty fast. You see, and they can glide too. All right, let's get another scripture. Jeremiah four and thirteen. Behold, he shall come as a cloud, and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. His horses also, I mean, his horses are swifter than eagles. You see, swifter than eagles. Those as birds flying, like I just read the previous verse. But these are going to be swifter than eagles. These chariots, they're going to be swifter than any type of bird. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. You see. All right, let's get a uh, an example. 
Uh, this is 2 Kings 2. Let's start at 9. And it came to pass, and it came to pass when they were gone, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken up. You see, Elisha, Elijah was going to be taken up into a chariot. You know how you see in different movies and different videos how a chariot beams up a person? You know, with a tractor beam? That's kind of how it was with Elijah. He was beamed up. And he said, Before I be taken away. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, That thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. You see, and if it, and it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and a horseman of fire. You see, some kind, sometimes the chariots are called chariots of fire. And the horses of fire, I'm pretty sure there were a lot of other chariots following that main chariot. You see, like in an army, you have one chariot and then you have other chariots following behind them on horses. You see, and parted them asunder, separated them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind, like a tractor beam, into heaven. The chariot beamed him up and Elisha saw it and cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. You see? So Elisha, he saw a chariot. He knew that the chariots took, took Elijah up. You see? All right, let's get another precept. Uh, all right, here we go. All right, the cloud. Okay, verse 7. Um, Mark. 9 and 7, and there was a cloud that over, this is talking about when uh, Yahweh, who people ignorantly called Jesus, took his disciples up to the mountain of configuration, and he talked with them, and he transfigured himself, which he became a spirit. All right, verse 7, there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. That was the Most High talking about Yahweh. But you see how a cloud overshadowed them? It was a large chariot. All right. Let's see. Let's see if I can find another precept. And a cloud. Let's see. Acts 1 and 9. All right. It's the last one. Acts 1, verse 9. All right. All right. To the point, and when he had spoke these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sights. You see, a cloud received him. He was beamed up. Yahweh, he was beamed up by a chariot. And while they looked steadfast and towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These were angels, which said unto them. I mean, which which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye glazing up into gazing up into heaven? The same Yahweh Shai which was taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You see? So the second coming, when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's gonna come back in a chariot. <clears throat> Let's go get that. And this this will be the last scripture. Alright. Behold. He come nip with let's see. This will be the last one. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's gonna say Oh darn. Alright. Let me try to get it real fast. Where is it? Let's go search for it again. He, yeah, he coming. He. Clouds. All right, let's try to get it. 
There we go. Revelations 1 and 7. Behold. Let's get it. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, even they that pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall will because of him. Even so, amen. All right. I want to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shabbat, Bahashim, Rekakadash. Double honor to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. And salutations to the elect, wherever you may be. Shalom.